<laughs> oh, prepare yourself. <laughs> My beloved brother and best friend, if you would have heard when I what I just tried to start out with in this, uh, you would have been like, ah! <laughs> prepare yourself. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor, give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children in His arms. He carries them all day long. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep, and strong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. <laughs> if you would have heard the very first time I tried to do that, brother, even you, merciful, kind brother, would have been like, uh, Brad. Psalm 107, please, please. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be looking at. Be a Berean, get off your duff, take the book off the shelf, open it up, and follow me along. Check me out, make sure I'm not lying to you. Check me out, hold me accountable. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Praise Him! Of all days, you have 365 days, but today, on a day, on a day when people are going to be glorifying death with their, with their union with hell that they have made, Psalm 107, verses 1, on to verse... Uh, Eight. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands, from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works, to the children of men. What are some of his wonderful works? Oh, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The blood that he shed on the cross. 
Huh? How about that? Hmm? And, and, and Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Psalm 32. One and two. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. See, there's a, there's a catch to this. There's a catch, yeah. See, you have to go to the Lord on his terms, the way he prescribed for us today in this dispensation. You don't just walk around of the world, and all of a sudden, walking around, you suddenly turn on the lights like, oh, okay, I believe now, therefore I'm saved. Or, let me see. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Ah, that means I'm saved because I can say it. Oh, that means I'm saved because I believe I am. Psalm 32, verses 5 on to verse 7. I, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. And mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Shilah. Personal accountability. Not hiding under the umbrella term that we're all sinners. Personal accountability. Personal accountability. Oh, praise the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let's continue. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Why? Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Shalom. You know, on a day when, um, beg your pardon, on a day when the world is celebrating death, when Christianity is calling evil good and good evil and trying to make Christian a day of evil. You know, on a day like this, Psalm, Psalm 8, Psalm 8, not Psalm, excuse me, Proverbs, Proverbs, chapter 8, verses 32 under 36. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and then shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Love death. Like you walk around, walk around and you see these houses that are littered with Halloween decorations and graves and skeletons and prosthetic heads and limbs hanging from trees. Yeah, yeah, and heads hanging from porches and it's okay for little children to dress up like devils today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, but he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. And you got these Christians in their buildings saying, come to the church building parking lot and we'll give you out candy. Being partakers thereof of their evil deeds. Of course, Isaiah chapter 5. Verses 20 on to verse 23. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. 
You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, right? Woe to them that are mighty to drink wine, the wine of Babylon, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Now we know this about this day. We know this. This day is evil. For some it is just another day. But you, you look outside the door, you go amongst the populace, especially here in America. I don't know about other nations. But this is, this is a day of evil. This is an evil day. And instead of Reminding you, what we just looked at is reminder of enough. But instead of reminding you and going over what you already know, praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know, you read Psalm 136, you know, uh, where it, uh, Psalm 136, which obviously was made to be sung. You know, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 2 in Psalm 136. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. And then the final verse in Psalm 136, verse 26. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. I heard this sung before by some Hebrews, and it was absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I have not heard its like since. I have not heard the like of someone singing Psalm 136 like I have heard before. It was absolutely beautiful. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. His mercy. His mercy in that he saved you because you came to him on his terms, not your own. On a day that is as evil as this, I think this is meat that we focus upon thus. Because most of you of the church, you of the church of the living God know what this day is about. It's about glorifying death. The world being reminded and reminding themselves that they have made a covenant with death and with hell. People don't want to hear that. Because they justify it for the kids. It's all for the kids, right? kids who you of the world are making into little monsters fulfilling what is written in uh, Proverbs 30 about a generation whose jaw teeth are knives who curse their father and their mother curse their father and doth not bless their mother turn in your authorized version of scriptures to Psalm 8 what we are going to do is we are going to basically work off of two verses in Psalm 8. And we are going to dissect these verses quite heavily. You could say this will be an expository type video. You could say that. Because we are going to break down just two verses in Psalm 8. Please go there. Uh, if you have two sets of scriptures, uh, that might be helpful for you. Uh, you know, if you got one of one of these ribbon marker things, that that might be also helpful for you. But we're we're going to look at many things today about this. Okay, so please follow me along. Um, this is not going to be milk for the most part. Psalm eight, verse one. Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. 
The object, the individual of our praise is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Now look at that, how that starts. Lord, capital letters, our Lord. See right there, right there. Lord, our Lord. Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Verses 26 on to verse 29. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Now look at that. I don't know how it is in your set of scriptures, but see how it is in mine. Where is that? Uh, where, 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 <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Where my finger is here. See that? You see that? Written the same way in the other uh, set of scriptures. Capital letters, but all the but the O R D is set lower, but yet all capital. Hmm. Okay. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, which hath shewed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So when you see the capitals like that, it is commonly known that that is a reference unto God, the Father. But then you see our Lord, Lowercase, uh, uppercase L with all lowercase O-R-D. I believe this is showing us about God manifest in the flesh. That's what I believe, okay? Because there is only one God. Only one God. But God is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Just like you and I are. We are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay? Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. But the soul of the Godhead, who is the Father. And we're going to look at this. Jesus is the Father. Okay? So he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus is the Father. So when you see this here... O oh Lord, our Lord, our King, our God, our Savior. Okay? God, our King. God, our Lord. Jesus, our Lord, who is the Father. You get it? How excellent is thy name in all the earth. Now, he has exalted his word even above his name. But John chapter 20. John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verses 28 and 29. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, Thou hast believed, because the Jews require a sign. Remember about Thomas here. He, what did he say? What did he say? Uh, in verse 25. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said, This is Thomas, unto them, Except I see, shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. Hmm. And, and look at verse 27. Then he appeared and said, Peace be unto you. Okay. Then said he to Thomas, Reach for hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, you know, in this context here, it doesn't say at all that Thomas actually put his hand in his finger into the hands of our Lord. 
or grab the side. Doesn't say that that happened. But our Lord says, Thomas, because thou hast seen me. And today we walk by faith, not by sight. The Jews require a sign. Okay? Because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. See, the Lord, our Lord there, is showing us that God is king. And also God in a manifest form. God is king. God is God is God. He is Lord. Lord of lords. King of kings. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But see, again in John chapter 20, verse 29, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. There are some people out there whose whole premise of their faith is based on because... <laughs> You've seen it, right? You've seen the Lord. You have not seen the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not. Dear friend, you have not. It's a lie. Oh, you might have seen something. What you have seen is that angel of light. Satan himself trans is transformed into an angel of light. You have not seen the Lord Jesus Christ. God has not manifested himself to you today. He has not. You're deceived. You're deceived. And any of you, these charismatic people who said, I saw the Lord. No, you did not. You saw Satan. You saw Satan. You didn't see the Lord. Because we walk by faith, not by sight. You had to see the Lord in order to be converted. Are you Jewish? Are you a Hebrew? No, mate, huh? You're not, huh? But yet you've seen the Lord. You're greatly deceived. Any of you who say that you have seen the Lord today, you have not. I know you haven't. You're a liar. You know why? Because the scriptures prove otherwise. Link for that will be in the description box. One second, please. All right. All right. Now... Let's go to Psalm 110. Psalm 110. Okay? Psalm 110. O oh Lord, our Lord. God is our, God is our Lord. God is our King. He really is. He is the King of the Jews. But we are to praise Him and to serve Him. He is our God. He is our ruler. He is our King. He is our Lord. Okay? And who is God save the Lord? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? Psalm 110. Psalm 110. Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord. Okay? Now this is not talking about a trinity. The trinity is heretical. It is satanic. The, the trinity does not exist. Okay? To hell with your trinity, Catholic. Okay? The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now this is reference unto the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus as son of David, king of the Jews, lord of lords, king of kings, king of kings, lord of lords, that kind of thing. Okay? The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Out of Zion. Salvation is of the Jews. Is it not evident that our Lord sprang from the tribe of Judah, okay, out of Zion. Salvation comes out of Zion. The Jews, the Hebrews, okay, not the Hamites or the Japhethites, okay. The Lord shall send, uh, send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Hold your place and go to Revelation chapter 12. The rod of iron, rod of iron, rod of iron. 
rod of iron, this, this Jesus of the scriptures. The Jesus of the scriptures is not the Jesus that many of you are being taught today, especially if you're deceived and go to one of those wicked buildings. Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 5. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Catholic, this is not Mary. This is Israel. Okay? This is Israel, not Mary. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon was under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Twelve stars. The twelve tribes of Israel. You know those tribes that some of these heretics say are lost? Twelve stars. If it were Mary, does that mean that Mary had twelve children? Hmm? She might have. But no, this is talking about Israel. Israel. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, in pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. Uh, look at verse 9 in uh, Revelation 12. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, from Genesis chapter 3, okay, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, that's the dragon, Satan, okay, Lucifer, okay. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his hail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And you remember what Herod did at the birth of Jesus, where he wanted to kill him, and went and had all those other children murdered. Yeah. And she brought forth a man-child, our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Who was to rule all nations. O Lord our Lord. With a rod of iron. It's funny. Some people think that um, to be of the church of the living God is restrictive. Wait till the kingdom of heaven, where it's all works. All works. Kingdom of heaven, where everything is dependent upon whether or not you do something. You don't, you don't need faith in the kingdom of heaven because Jesus is going to be on the throne at Jerusalem. Okay? So during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. You think that being of the church of the living God is restrictive or some nonsense like that? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes, and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Very interesting. Very, very interesting, huh? Now, go back to Psalm 110, picking up at verse 3. Let's read verse 2 again. Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. More on that in a little bit. Verse 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauty of beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast to do of thy youth. Yes, because at his second coming, at his second coming, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I believe midway through the time of Jacob's trouble, that there are going to be when that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes into the third rebuilt temple and says, I am God, and that his visage is going to resemble 
the Roman Catholic Jesus, okay, that um, there are going to be Jews who get it, and they're going to search the scriptures then for a change. Good things will eventually come for the Hebraic people, the Jews, descended of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 4. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, hold your place. Go to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. I am one that believes that in Hebrews chapter 7 that this Melchizedek was a precarnate form, was you know, a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, in the Old Testament, when God would appear in a body, he would come and go, come and go. But see, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Um, the New Testament, the books chronologically of the New Te in the New Testament, God was born of a woman, okay? Uh, made, uh, made of a woman, okay? Born in the flesh, okay? Whereas in the Old Testament... Okay, he would come and go, come and go in the form of a man. Okay, all right. By the way, Mary was not the mother of God. Okay, she was not. Uh, link for Mary, how the Catholics like to twist that, which is actually the Queen of, he uh, Queen of Heaven, Diana of the Ephesians, otherwise known as a, um, a Starte or a Semiramis. Semiramis? Does not appear in the scriptures. You're right about that, brother. Okay? But let's continue. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 14 on to verse 22. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 14 on to verse 22. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And of course, you look at verse 12. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Okay? You don't have to keep the law today to be saved, to stay saved, or be right with God. Okay? Watch out for guys like Mark the Messenger. Okay? All right? Verse 15. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. Who is made, not after the law of a carnal commandment, fleshly commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Endless life. Okay? For he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. We just read it. Okay? For there is, for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Like Paul says, if there was a commandment that could give life, then it, uh, then it would have been by the law. Then, you know, what, what need would there have been for Christ to die? Right? I believe Paul said that. Okay? The law could make no one perfect as concerning the conscience, because you had to continually offer sacrifices. Okay? That's why, you know, you don't keep the law to be saved. Because it is finished. It's been fulfilled with the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ himself and the blood he shed on the cross, see? Okay? Verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh to God. Uh, draw nigh unto God. Now, does that mean that we are not going to sin? No. But we are perfect in the eyes of our Lord because of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even though we are going to sin, okay, he sees his righteousness in us. Okay, that's what the importance is of the blood. When the Lord sees, the only color the Lord sees is red. Okay, whether or not you are uh, saved by the blood of the crucified one. Okay. And inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. 
But this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hmm. So by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Because he has no beginning, no end. He is God. He is the Father. Okay? A priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And I just closed the scriptures because looking in Hebrews chapter 7 now, look at verse 1 and 3 in Hebrews chapter 7. Okay? For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, Salem, shalom, peace, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Salem, um, Salem, shalom, peace. Okay? Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days. Verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus called himself, I am, the everlasting father. Okay? He is the father. Okay? Nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. So who was that Melchizedek? That was God. That was God. Precarnate form. Absolutely. And you saw without mother or without father. Meaning um, he wasn't brought into the world as birthed into the world through a woman. Okay? Yes. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name above all, uh, name in all the earth, who has set thy, set thy glory above the heavens. And back now in Psalm 110. Okay? The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Philippians chapter 2, of course. Of course, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. This, this is nuts and bolts. But you know what? On a, on a wicked day like today, brethren. Sun's coming out. On a wicked day like today of Halloween. This is stuff we ought to remember. To refresh ourselves. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 on to verse 11. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Sorry about that. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 7. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then heir of God through Christ. Go back to Philippians chapter 2. Verse 7 again, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth, 
and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know that there are devils that say, you know, what have what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus, son of the most high God? You know, that woman that followed uh, Paul around and annoyed him. These are the servants of the most high God that shew us the way unto salvation. I've encountered something like that myself personally. Yeah. 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 At the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Go back to Psalm 110 now. He shall, uh, verse 5, The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. Look at verse 6. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 30, on to verse 33. Hmm. Jesus says here, you know, O Lord, our Lord, Psalm 8, verse 1, How excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. John 10, 30 on to verse 33. I and my Father are one in essence, <laughs> are one in being, <laughs> are one in nature. But no, I and my Father are one. Elsewhere, as you know, he said before Abraham was, I am. And what did they do? The Jews took up stones to kill him. Why? Because he just called himself God the Father. With him saying this, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, Makest thyself God. Hmm. Beg your pardon? So, I think the Jews understood what he said. Jesus is the Father. He is God the Father. O Lord, our Lord. King of kings, Lord of lords. He is going to rule over you eventually. He is. Is it going to be in grace through your faith? Or is it going to be by a rod of iron when you give account to him at the great white throne? Hmm? Which one is it going to be? Of course, go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 on verse 12. Acts, not 10, Brad. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 12. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth! Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. This is the stone, back in Acts chapter 4, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must. Be saved. And go now to Colossians. Colossians chapter 6. <laughs> Excuse me. Colossians chapter 1. 
<laughs> Colossians chapter 6, Brad. <laughs> Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 20. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. You see that? And he is before all things. That includes yourself. That includes what you want. Your wannas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. Oh, how badly do you struggle to hold on to your own little things? How badly? How badly? See, we as the church of the living God, Pray, praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor, give to his holy name. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. You're alive today because he lets you be alive. He has given you breath. Anything you have, it's because the Lord has allowed it. Whether it be for judgment against you or to benefit the body, whatever it is, whatever it is, nothing happens without the Lord says. so. And he is the head of the body, the Christians, the church, the building, no, the body, the people, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. You know, the Johannian common, comma, uh, 1 John 5, 7. Yeah. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, his marvelous works to the children of men, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Hmm. Beg your pardon. Writing down as they come uh, video uh, links. Yes. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. Yeah. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. There are no more sacrifices for sins. No more. The law has been fulfilled. You don't have to keep the law to be saved today. Okay. And now, go to John, go to the Lord's Prayer. How many of you, how many of you ignorantly just turned to the book of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount? Hmm? Or, how many of you looked into, you know, thou our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name? That's that's Satan's fault. That that you think that is the Lord's prayer. That's not the Lord's prayer. See, Satan through his church has told you something that about that. That's a Jewish prayer for Jews. Okay? You don't see that mimicked anywhere after the death, burial, and resurrection. You don't see Paul. Now, that's a model of a type of prayer, yes, 
But remember, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, you know. That's a Jewish prayer for Jews, okay? That's a Jewish prayer for... Teach us how to pray. When, when you pray, who? The Jews, the Hebrews, okay? That's a Hebraic prayer for Hebraic people, for the Jewish people. It's not the Lord's Prayer, my friend. What is the Lord's Prayer? John chapter 17. Okay. John chapter 17, the Lord's Prayer. Verses 1 on to verse 5. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may, Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Hmm. Notice the way he is speaking as it is referred to as in the third person. And that doesn't mean about the Trinity, you wicked Trinitarians. Okay? And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, Jehovah saves the anointed one, whom thou hast sent. I now, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had, which with thee before the world was, and the very first, go to the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 3. Here's the Godhead at work. In the beginning, God. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the capitalist spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Beg your pardon. So, God the Father, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. And God said the word which was made flesh. God said, spake, spoke. His word made flesh. Let there be light. And there was light. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ was referring to in the true Lord's Prayer right there. That's what he was referring to. He was referring to this. Amen. Yes. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Is, his, is he not worthy to be praised? On a day when the world is glorifying death, we ought to be glorifying life. Jesus Christ, who is our life. Jesus Christ, who is our life. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Today, we all know how evil Halloween is. We all know what these warped, perverted parents are abusing their children with this nonsense. They are. Praise him. Praise him. The strength of our praise. The strength of, of our praise. In a day when evil is glorified, let our strength be our praise for our Lord. On a day when the devil is glorified, let us glorify and praise him. Now verse 2 in Psalm 8. 
Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. That thou mightest still the enemy and avenger. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies. Go to Matthew chapter 21. Now, those there are those out there who will say, this is a contradiction. <laughs> Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 on to verse 16. What are you doing, Brad? Yes. Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 on to verse 16. Verse 2 in Psalm 8. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. The strength of our praise. You know, praise him, that hymn that, we, that was sung in the beginning. One of the times that Brother Alexander came to, to visit us, we went to um, Dollar 25 Tree, a store. And uh, we were waiting in line. And our brother Alexander, he, he ha, he's very analytical. There are times when he will notice a gnat on the rear end of a fly. Okay? Bless his heart and soul. But um, we were standing in line, and I was just standing there. And there were people talking in the background, and I, didn't, I really wasn't paying attention. I was just, I was just standing there. And our brother, who was behind me, broke out loudly, praise the Lord. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. He started singing this hymn. And it got everybody's attention. And I even kind of looked at him, and I'm just like, yeah, my brother here, you know, kind of smiled. And um, the kid at the cash register was looking at our brother like he's crazy. Which people, the lost world, will look at us of the Church of the Living God as if we are crazy. You know, if you walk around with the scriptures in your hand, reading it out loud, passing people, or you're going to sing a hymn because someone, and I forget the legitimacy of why he did that specifically, but someone was basically blaspheming the Lord or something like that. And our brother... To combat that, praise him, praise him. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. I, I was fortunate to be a part of it. I, and I and had I known the hymn better, I would have sung along with him just as loud. Okay? He can get pretty loud. Praise the Lord for that. But, I mean, something like that. In the face of some blasphemy that some dopey kid was doing or something like that, uh, he bursts out into a hymn. You get the point? Our strength is in our praise. Can you praise him while the ship is sinking? Hmm? Matthew chapter, where did I say? 21 verses 12 on to verse 16. And Jesus went into the temple of God. And cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. More on verse 14 in a minute. But look at this. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were displeased. Hmm. And they said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings? Thou hast perfected praise. Wait a minute. For out of the uh, Psalm 8 verse 2. 
For out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength. Why? Because of thine enemies. And right here he says, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? Well, that's a contra contradiction, is it? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength. Why? Because of thine enemies. And the Lord, the Lord says, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. See, the key is here, ordained strength, perfected praise. Why were they praising? Because the king had come. Those who had eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts of the children of Israel, who knew that's our promised Mashiach. That's God the Father. That's the Son of David. That's Him. That's Him. Hosanna. What is that? Hosanna to the Son of David. Okay? Ordained strength. Perfected praise. There were those in the temple who knew that that's the Mashiach. That's God. That's God, our Father. That's Him. Right there. That's Him. That's Him. And who, and look at that verse 15. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children, look at verse 2 in Psalm 8. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Hmm. Now does that mean goo goo? No. Children. Children who are dependent. Not self-sufficient. The video that was done on Friday um, that will be in the, uh, the description box for you to go over to as we, we talk about this spiritual arrogance and depth in that video. Okay, But yes, and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children the children the children who saw their father. The children is like, hey, the son of David, Hosanna to the son of David, the Mashiach. That's, that's him. That's God. That's our father. That's him. So it was the strength of those children who knew, who saw. Their strength is what? Perfected praise. I know of certain devils who mock us of the church of the living God because we like to sing hymns and they make fun of us because we sing them not like some Hollywood studio type of person. Why is that? Well, number one, okay, okay, yes, maybe, maybe my voice might be bad to you, but see, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Because of thine enemies. The self-righteous, the coadjutor, the infiltrator. The self-righteous. Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? Perfected praise. See, our strength is in our praise. That's why when you're singing a hymn unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, it doesn't, okay, you might be a little out of tune, you might not be in right rhythm, but see, it's our strength because we are saying, Abba, Father, as we have already seen, we are crying, Abba, Father, praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. This isn't a contradiction. This isn't a contradiction at all. Our strength is what? Perfected praise. Out of tune, out of key, off-kiltered, 
crackly sounding whatever to the ears of man, but unto the Lord. Perfected praise, our strength. Why? Because of thine enemies. There are in a specific uh, chap from England who has mocked people for singing hymns. Okay? Has mocked people and made fun of them for singing hymns. He's not saved himself. He's a filth bag devil. But, but see, our strength is our praise. When our brother Alexander Hartley did that at the dollar twenty-five tree, and everyone looked at him like he was crazy. That was his strength in praising. He was doing, Abba, Father, I'm hearing some kid blaspheme your name or blaspheme you. I can't hear it. And I can't. Out of the bay, out of the mouth, what is it? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? So what does he do? He blurts out that hymn. And our praise is our strength. And it's a sign that I, in our weakness. He couldn't, he couldn't bear to hear that. He couldn't bear to hear that. And these children who were crying, Hosanna to the son of David. Oh, Lord, you're finally here. The king has come. Pray, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Praise him, praise him. Lord, you're here. About time. Oh, Lord, we, we're, how sick of you are this, of this world? How sick of it are you? Or are you one of these Christians that you're, you're just comfortable here, right? Things are going good. Your properties are exploding. Your business is going well. You've got all the money in the bank. You're not troubled like other men, right? Things are going good. Hey, if the redemption happens, uh, that's just a little bit extra gravy, right? Because you got it good right now, right here, don't you? You poor, egocentric sap. Don't you? Don't you? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Because of thine enemies. Verse 14 in Matthew chapter 21. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and healed, and he healed them. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Okay, I, okay now I'll give, that, give this to some. Uh, yeah, some people when they sing a hymn to those who are not saved or even to those who are saved. It's like... Yeah, brother, but you know what? You're singing a hymn. You're singing praise unto the Lord. Perfected praise. Perfected praise isn't that you're singing it just perfectly, by the way. Perfected, perfected praise is strength, ordained strength. Abba, Father, do you get it? And if you sound... Like Mike Tyson trying to sing Amazing Grace. Uh, if you're my brother, my sister, of the Church of the Living God, from a heart that cries, Abba, Father, I'm, I would never, ever, ever, someone who can't stand a hymn. Or they'll say, well, I can't stand it sung wrong. That's telling. That's telling. You might be singing it not right, but if it's coming from the heart uh, as Abba Father, that's perfected praise, brother, sister. That's why those I, I think that many of you should at least sing one hymn and put it on your YouTube video uh, channel. Send the link. I'll put it on the channel here. Really, you brethren, sing a hymn. One hymn. Cover your face if you got to. Sing a hymn. Upload it. Especially today, on a day like today, Halloween. Sing a hymn. Put it on YouTube. Go ahead. But Mark chapter 2, verse 17. <laughs> uh, verse 16 and 17. 
And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they, say, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith, saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The righteous. I, I'm not that bad. I saved myself. Hey, I, I'm saved because I believe. I'm saved because I can utter a statement. <laughs> you know, I actually for a long time believed that was true. That just because someone could utter a statement that proved they were saved. Oh boy, was I ever wrong about that. But see, they that are whole have no need of the physician. But they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, the self-righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay? And go to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, verses 36 on to verse 39. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the tears, with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. A sign of repentance. woman that was a sinner. Was she a harlot? It's often surmised that she was, but it just says that she was a sinner. Now, when the Pharisee, <clears throat> Pharisee, who elevates, who elevates the traditions of men above Scripture, and then goes about to twist scripture to defend the traditions of men, the, the, the traditions of Catholics, King James Bible believing Christian. Yeah, yeah. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, If this man, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for he is, for she is a sinner. Oh, hoity-toity, huh? Hoity-toity. This spiritual arrogance, spiritual arrogance, holier than thou, which is a smoke in the Lord's nostrils. Oh, <laughs> look online here. Look at some of these people, brethren. Go to John chapter 9. Now, in the video that was done on Friday, uh, we, we touched on these same verses. But we're going to touch on it in this video too, okay? John chapter 9, verses 26 on to verse 34. Now, like I said, in the video, they live, they sleep. We touched on this already. But we're going to touch on it in this video because it ha we have to, okay? This is addressing again... The guy that was born blind, who the Lord opened his eyes, he goes before the, the council and they didn't believe he was born blind. They get the mother and she's like, hey, you know, this was our son who was born blind. How he's seen now, we don't know. Ask him. He can answer for himself. Okay. He tells them that it was Jesus that uh, opened his eyes, but they didn't hear. Okay. Like I said, we talked about this in the previous video on Friday. But we're talking about it here, okay? Uh, John chapter 9, verses 26 on to verse 34. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, Oy vey! And ye did not hear. 
Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Kind of a dig at them. Because he knew that they wouldn't. Because they, 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 they refused to hear. Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple. We are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. Verse uh, 29, we go and expound on a little in the previous video. Check that out, okay? The man answered and said unto them, uh, what, Why herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes? This is the, head, uh, the headstone of the corner, rejected of men, but precious in the sight of God. Okay? Now, we know. Wait. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes? Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. And look at the reaction. Look at their reaction. <laughs> they answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Who are you? Who are you? We are the scholars. We have the credentials. Who are you? Again, check out that video that was done Friday. Check it out. It'll be in the description box. They live, they sleep. Check it out, okay? Now, skip a little down to 39 on to verse 41. I, you know what? Let's read to the close of the chapter. Let's continue. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Hey, Mr. Haggy! <laughs> thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Someone worshipped the Lord Jesus, contrary to what the Jehos want you to believe. And Jesus said, of judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. Like the, the beggar, the rich man and the beggar, remember? The rich man, good master, he, he only saw a meal ticket, he didn't see the Mashiach, he didn't see the son of David, while the blind man who had no sight said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me, and Jesus stops. See, that, that's, that's what we're talking about, brethren. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? It's not a contradiction. Not at all. Not at all. And some of the Pharisees which were with him, heard these words, and said unto him, Are we blind also? Are we blind also? We're, we're, we've been, we got the degrees. We've been, we've been trained. We know the unseals. We know the original Greek and Hebrew. Yeah, we know all this. Yeah. Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, Ye should not, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. We want verses 18. Oh no, first Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, excuse me. 
verses 1 on to verse 8. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Babes suckling the breast. Getting the milk. See? See how that works? Okay? Out of the mouth of what is our Lord? And what does our Lord say here in 21? Yay. Uh, verse 16. Yay. Have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? Back in 1 Peter chapter 2. So, if so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a, a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. What are those? Oh, Hosanna to the Son of David. <laughs> praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. He has ordained strength through perfected praise. Because in your hearts we cry, what? I'm a father, don't we? Don't we? Verse 6 in 1 Peter chapter 2. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner. But stay disallowed. They want to build their own temples, like the Masons. They want to save themselves, uh, building their own temples. To masonry. Look at it. <laughs> a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, wherefore also... Wherefore, unto also they were appointed. They were appointed how? Because they wanted to believe a lie. Like it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Therefore, God gave them over to that. They want, you want to believe a lie? You want to believe in a false, in falsehood? That you can save yourself? That you're a good person? God will give you what you want. Be careful. Be careful. Okay? Yes, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemy, thou, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. The enemy and the avenger. If you haven't figured it out, people, who are the greatest enemies to our Lord Jesus Christ? Who? It's not the atheists. It's not even the Muslims. It's not even uh, the Jehos and the Morons, maybe. But the greatest enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ are those who are the religious. The religious. Beg your pardon. The religious people. I have no problems with people who are my enemies openly being atheist or Muslim or whatever, uh, these wicked uh, Hebrew Israelite people who are not Hebrews, whether they be Brit Israelites or black Hebrew Israelites, whatever. But the worst enemies that you will encounter are the ones who, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. The ones who pat you on the back. The ones who's like, oh yeah, let me praise the Lord with you. Those are the worst enemies of our Lord. The religious. The religious. 
I'm going to go on a limb. I'm going to say the Christians are the greatest enemy of our Lord. I remember hearing stories about people who go to these church buildings. They want to go and sing in their choir and they had to have a tryout. They couldn't keep tune. They couldn't do this. So they were rejected. Rejected for singing praise to the Lord in a church building. I've heard of that. So have probably some of you. And he says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. Perfected praise. Off kilter, out of tune, broken, cracked. But from a heart that says, Abba Father. Abba Father. These religious people, brethren, they are the enemy and the avenger, the professional, the well-to-do Christians, you know, the guys who have it all figured out, who aren't troubled like other men, the esoteric. Those are the enemies of our Lord. Those are the enemies of our Lord. And it is because of that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 26 unto the close of the chapter. For ye see your calling brethren. How, not, how that not many wise men after the flesh. Example, Jordan Peterson. Says he believes in God. Oh, he sure does. The one he looks at and the one that is the little God of this world. Yeah. Not many mighty. Not many noble are called. You know, the ones whose uh, parents had everything to do to build this nation. Yeah, you know, the ones who uh, rub uh, their kindred in your face as superior? Yeah. Closet Nazi. Yeah. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, the educated, the elite, the upper crust, the upper echelon. Yeah. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound things which are mighty. Mighty men of God like John MacArthur, Sam Spit. <laughs> yeah. Sam Spit. Yeah. And, you know, Voody Vocham, Paul Washer, Ray Comfort. And the list goes on and on of these professional preachers, these Christians. They are the enemies. They are the enemies. Yeah. They are wise. They are the mighty. But we, the Church of the Living God, singing our hymns out of tune, out of time, making even the most... <laughs> patient of all brethren it's like you're singing that from a heart that cries oh, Abba Father oh, that, that's good oh, boy let's sing, let's sing another one okay even a brother like that or sister like that it's they acknowledge oh it's coming from a heart that says Abba Father our strength is in our praise our strength is in Christ, who is the source of our praise. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Verse 28 in 1 uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 1. And base things of the world... And things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. 
things that are. Are such as what? These big time ministries and ministers. These elitist class of educated people trained by Jesuits. They look down on you. See, God's got a little people. And, and you can see this elitism with the Calvinistic uh, doctrine, uh, with the Brizraelites, the black Hebrew Israelites, the Calvinists, obviously, a lot of the King James Bible-believing Christians. Prove me wrong. Why? Why has God chosen us squalor? Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. The avenger. Avenger of what? You've taken away my right to be an elite. Like why the Jews rejected Jesus. He wanted to take away their entire system of their elitist. And that they would serve others instead of themselves. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. John chapter 5, brethren. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Verses 25 on to verse 31. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. This, this thing about the dead, very quickly, hold your place here. Um, uh, you could reference about how uh, after the resurrection, people came out of the graves and went into Jerusalem, yes. But also, the dead, okay? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. And they that hear shall live. Uh Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. And you who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. When in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, Disobedience. They hear the truth of the gospel and they reject it. That makes them a child of disobedience. Okay? Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the, the, the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. You disobey the truth of the gospel, you hear it, you reject it, you are a child of disobedience, hence you are a child of wrath, you're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. But they, you're dead in your trespasses and sins. Okay? Go back to Matthew, uh, Matthew, John chapter 5, verse 25 again. Okay? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. I do not believe within that context he is actually talking about dead bodies. I believe that is a spiritually dead, dead people. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. And we already looked at that in Galatians. Okay? Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves... Now see right here, graves. Up there in verse 25... 
dead. Here graves. There's a distinction between those who are in graves and those who are dead. Walking dead. The walking dead. Graves. Those who are in graves. See. So verse 25. According to verse 28. Verse 25 is not talking about people who are in graves. He's talking about the walking dead out there. You know the zombie apocalypse. Okay. That television tells you about. That there's going to be walking dead out there. Guess what? There are a lot of walking dead out there today. Oh, dead in what? Dead in trespassings and trespasses and sins. Okay? Verse 29. And shall come forth. Okay, marvel not at this, verse 28 and 29. Marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And it's talking about judgment. But now go to back to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. We want verses 18 on to verse 22. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the capital as spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Okay? Preach to the souls and uh, spirits that were in prison. Those who were in Abraham's bosom. Okay? The like figure and good old German Martin Luther, you know, he, uh, he based this. He believed that you needed to get baptized in water to be saved. And he based it off of this. No. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, answer: You get baptized because of an inner conversion. Uh, baptism is an outer profession of an inner conversion. Okay. But we are baptized into Christ, identified with Christ. That is our true baptism. Baptism is just a public profession of an inner conversion. Peter is not saying anything that water baptism does save us. Okay? All right? And look, it doesn't say the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Okay? It doesn't say anything about water, by the way. Water ba baptism does not save you, Lutheran closet Nazi, okay? Who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Okay? The like figure. He's talking about how the ark was the figure like the wood, okay? The cross, okay? That and we and that's a type of uh, prefiguration type of the redemption of the purchased possession. Jesus Christ is our hope. He is the blessed hope. Okay? And we are baptized into Christ. Okay? We are identified with his death. Okay? Why? Because we came to him on his terms, broken of our self-righteousness. We have died to ourselves. Okay? And when you have died to yourself, and have had contrition, godly sorrow. And have called on his name in fear of him. And he saves you. You are part of his body, his bones and his flesh. Okay? You're sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? You're once saved, always saved. That is the identification. Water baptism, okay, is a public profession of an inner conversion. If you do not get baptized, you're not going to go to hell. But you should get baptized because it's a profession, a public profession of an inner conversion. It's not necessary for your salvation, though. 
Don't believe the Charismatics or the Catholics who tell you it is. Okay? All right? Now, go back to John chapter 5. Look at verse 30. Look at verse 30. Okay? And we'll read on to verse 31. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Look at verse 30. Go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Verses 30 on to verse 36. John chapter 3, verses 30 on to verse 36. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Wait. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly. And speaketh of the earth. Because this wisdom is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? Why do you think a lot of these fakes get so rave reviews? Okay? He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth. And no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Go to Isaiah chapter 61. Go to Isaiah chapter 61. Yeah. Beg your pardon, brethren. Such a good person make the air stink. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 61. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Our Lord Jesus Christ, this is a reference unto. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim <laughs> liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil for joy for mourning, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and adventure. Amen. Amen. And also, Psalm, the very first Psalm, the very first Psalm, Psalm 1, verses 1 and 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And also Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. Verses 7 on to verse 8. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, 
and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Why? Why is that? Why is that? Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. Verses 9 and 10. And Nehemiah, which is the Trishatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry. Why? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm. Mm. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. And, he, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise? Abba, Father, Hosanna to the Son of David. Abba, Father, Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And alas, his strength is made perfect in weakness. It was a moment of weakness when Brother Alexander Hartley started singing like he did. Weak, he was made weak because he heard, he was vexed by what he was hearing. It weakened him. It's like, oh, praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Walking by people, hearing them talk. Yeah, you take out the scriptures. While you're walking by, you can hear people talking about nonsense, devilish things. You start reading the scriptures out loud. Praise him, praise him. Psalm 28. Psalm 28. Psalm 28, verses 7 on to verse 9. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth. Abba, Father! And with my song will I praise him. Look at that verse. The Lord is my strength and my shield. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemy, enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength. And he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. Psalm 22. Psalm 22. Verses 19 on to verse 23. Be not far, be not thou far from me, O Lord my strength. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, and our adversary the devil walketh about as a roaring lion. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye 
the seed of Israel. Okay? And finally, Psalm 147. One of the last five, five, synonymous, the number of death. The last five Psalms in Scripture. How you and I are to leave this world. Life is in the Psalms. We are to leave this world praising Him. Because we're going on to the Father, to our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 147. <laughs> Psalm 147. We were just going to read verses 10 and 11. But let's read this whole thing, shall we? Then we'll be done. Almost. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of, of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises upon the harp unto our God, who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders, and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandments upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoar frost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I can't, I can't help myself. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, oh, earth his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. <laughs> hmm. We know what we know what they of the world are doing today. Let us Praise the Lord. He's coming soon. He's coming soon to redeem us. Sooner or later, it's going to happen, brethren. We know that on this day, the world glorifies death and reminds itself that it's in a covenant with death and in hell. And let us today Take time to praise the Lord. Because out of the mouth and babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. Which is what? Perfected praise. From a heart that cries out, Abba, Father. There are ways that you can witness on today where you do not intermingle or do as they do. 
Okay, you can track today. Okay, you can track today. If you're going to track to people who are out there, go to the fathers, go to the mothers. Put tracks in cars. Go to the stores and put tracks and stuff on there. Do that. There are things that you can do today. But most of all, most of all, praise Him. Praise Him. That's going to be it for this video. Um, there will be uh, several videos in the description box. Um, also check out the videos by Brother Alexander Hartley about hymns, why and where and when and that kind of stuff. And also, you want to hear some good hymns? Check out Joyful Noise. Our dear brother from Croatia, very, you know, very talented young man. The man, the Lord has given him a great gift. Great gift. It ain't easy singing while playing a guitar and not even looking at the fretboard. That's not easy. Okay. That's a stringed instrument, by the way. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, if you do. We love you, and thank you for those of us who pray for us. Thank you for those of you who pray for us. We pray for so many of you, the brethren. If you have prayer requests, let it be known. Uh, put it in the community thing, you know? Any prayer requests? Anything like that? Let it be known. Put it in the thing for people to see and uh, for prayers from the saints. Anyway, that's going to be it. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you. I love you. We'll see you in the next video.